So what's going on, Shark fans and NHL fans? Uh, so as promised, this is my final talk on the Sharks uh, this season. Really just giving my thoughts and getting the maybe my final take on how this went. Uh, you know, I consider this season a very good success. Why? I think they overachieved, considering the defense personnel they had and some of some of the expectations. A lot of people gave them down a down season. Despite making the playoffs, people were not expecting any kind of run. And, uh, you know, I honestly, before the season started, I thought that our window of opportunity closed big time last year with guys like Rob Blake and maybe Evgeny Nabokov and uh, even some of the supporting cast like Manny Malhotra. With some of those guys leaving, uh, I thought our window of opportunity would have closed on us. And Patrick Marlowe took the hometown discount. Uh, Tori Mitchell finally emerged a little bit. Uh, and Antti Niemi, a guy that I thought was overrated. He played out of his mind when he needed to. You know, the first half, it was it's very ugly. A lot of losses to start the year. Uh, people had us on the edge and even had us not making the playoffs because of how we played in January to start. <coughs> but in the end, though, the Sharks had a great second half. I think, you know, they were a much better team. They were winning with defense, not always high scoring. And in the end, they had a very nice end to the regular season, finishing second in the division, or the, sorry, in the conference. You know, a lot of people, ex including myself, thought this was the Kings' year to overtake the division for the, sh and the Sharks would be playing down a little bit. But the Sharks have a better window than before, and that surprises me. This, in a good way, of course, that the Sharks will have, probably have two or three more years of of chances to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, I thought. As I said before, I thought this was the Kings' year to overtake the Sharks. They, they got the much younger and better talent, but they found ways to lose, and Terry Murray's got his troubles out there for some some reason. They found ways to lose, even with Kopitar. So <coughs> that was an issue. Uh, going on, though, this season, they were able to win games with defense, as I said before. Uh, Niemi is not meant to shoot shut out an opponent. I understand that, but... The team itself played a lot better defensively in their own ends. Mark Edward Vlasic really emerged. Uh, Ian White proved to be a very solid rental for a second-round pick. You know, I get skeptical when we trade for a rental, but like those Brian Campbell and Bill Guerin trades, but we only gave up a second-round pick, not as much as those other two trades before, in the four, before. And I hope we re-sign them. I hope we're able to strike a hometown discount deal. I'm all for it. Just get a one- or two-year deal with Ian White. That would be great. Uh, but really in building the future, most of this team is locked up financially, which is, uh, you know, people might say it's a bad thing because these guys are losers, but Joe Thornton had his coming out party this uh, postseason. He re you can't, I mean, you can put blame on some of this team for losing against the Canucks, but Joe Thornton, he did his job. And he came up big for the Sharks when they needed to with big assists that set up game-winning goals, or he even scored the series-winning goal against the L.A. Kings, so... It's huge. Joe Thornton finally emerged, and we've been waiting for that. Patrick Marlowe came, he kind of sprung up late, scored the one big goal he needed to in the, against Detroit, and against the Canucks, he did find ways to score, as ugly as it was. But the big guy who I'm skeptical of now is Danny Heatley. Uh, you want to talk about choking and individuals, and a lot of that's going to fall on Heatley. He's the highest paid player on this team. He's not paid to play defense or ring up some assists. He's paid to score goals. He's supposed to be the dominant scoring guy, and uh, this was a very disappointing year for him. Uh, I'm happy I do not own a Danny Heatley jersey. I don't want one. He hasn't. He hasn't proved to me a whole lot. I uh, wish, you know, I don't. We can't trade any of these guys because they have no trade clauses. But I'm not really a big fan of Danny Heatley. This last time you could say he was hurt and injured, but this time there was no excuses. He didn't score the goals we needed to, and he did pretty much nothing this postseason. Very little. Unfortunately, Joe Pavelski did not do as great later in the postseason. Uh, Ryan Klo was a great emotional leader. Uh, Logan Couture did all right. But I, you know, people said we were floppers and crybabies. I mean, I don't really care what people have said about us flopping and penalties. We took our own bad penalties, and the discipline really hurt us in the long run. But to address the team needs, uh, they just need to affix the fourth line just a little bit. Got to let guys like Scott Nickel walk. Uh, I think he's getting too old. We don't. We need another two or three guys to work on the fourth line 
And then on defense, we need to address a few needs. You know, Boyle, Murray, great pairing. Jason Demers, Mark Edward Vlasic, another great pairing. And then lastly, you got, at the time, Nicholas Valene and Ian White. Obviously, I don't like Nicholas Valene. I've said it over and over again. That was a stupid signing. I don't want him back. He, Yeah, he scored that one fluke goal in Game 2, and I'm thankful for that. But he's proven to be too much of a liability to me, and he's going to have to go. He needs to walk. Kent Huskins needs to walk. Uh, Devin Sataguchi is a free agent. You just wonder what we're going to do with him. Uh, you know, he scored some big goals for us. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, he's so up and down and inconsistent, it, it's questionable. Does Logan Couture make him really uh, expendable enough to move him up and uh, put in some more farm guys on the youth? You just wonder of that. But you got to sign a guy to replace Nicholas Valin for depth purposes. I, I don't want to see Nicholas Valin back. You could re-sign Ian White. What do you do with the defense situation? Do you throw the kitchen sink at Shea Weber? That That's pretty debatable. I know that would be a lo cost a lot if we tried doing that. I don't think Nashville is going to let him walk easily. And then you got the... Uh, I thought about Kevin Bieksa. This was before the season started. Kevin Bieksa looked like a guy I wanted, but looks like that's not going to happen now with what's happening for uh, Vancouver. So good luck to Vancouver, by the way. I don't like Boston. So The... Uh, Canuck, uh, just don't really know. Who do we get on defense to replace Nicholas Valene? That's probably the biggest debate. You need a guy who can play both two-way hockey, a guy who can do, do some puck moving, and then a guy who could also play well in his own zone. Uh, Ian White was pretty good for that. i got to thank Doug Wilson for really giving the Sharks the best opportunity to win a cuff. I didn't think Antti Niemi would have done that, but he did. Game 7 against Detroit speaks for itself. He did what... Did what he needed to do, and some some of those games he really helped us out, making the big saves. Not necessarily statistically, but when you watch the games, he made big saves for us. And you, you kind of wonder, was that Doug Wilson's plan all along? He signs Nicholas Jalmerson to an offer sheet, and uh, that was to address our defensive needs. So if Chicago didn't match it, we'd give up compensation picks and sign him to a fat deal. But since Chicago matched it, it left the door open for Antti Niemi, and that must have been Doug Wilson's plan all along. And, you know, he always talked about wanting to be like the Blackhawks, and I think he took that a little bit too literally, getting a guy like Ben Eager, who's now, he needs to walk. I, I hope that he walks. I hope Kyle Wellwood can be resigned. But we're going to have to work on the face-offs. Uh, against Vancouver, we didn't do so well on the face-off circle like I'd hope, and that, that definitely hurt us. Penalty killing. Will need to be addressed. Just got to get one impact defenseman. I don't know what they're going to do, but I, I hear they're in free agency. There's going to be a lot of moves we can make. So, uh, But overall, I'm very satisfied with this year. I had I didn't have very big of expectations. I expected a second round exit bef before the season started. But uh, this team is better than last year's, and uh, they played. They found ways to win in the clutch. So I'm thankful for Doug Wilson for making the moves he did. Uh, thank both the Sharks for showing hard in Game 7. And we'll see what happens this offseason. It's nice that Antti Niemi won't be fighting free agency since we already signed him a little bit early. But we'll see what happens cap-wise. Who's going to go? Who's going to stay? Will Devin Setaguchi be resigned? Well, I'll find out very soon. So We'll see you all later. I'll talk to you guys in the offseason a, if a big move comes. And that's, that's talking if we sign a defenseman, not if we fix the fourth line or something. But... If there's a blockbuster move, I'll talk. But until then, we'll see you guys later in the off season, and uh, hopefully in October, I'll talk again about the Sharks before the season starts. So, it's been a good season, and I want to thank you all for watching me this postseason and this year. I know not a lot of you are Sharks fans subscribe to me, but uh, a lot of casual NHL fans like watching me, and I'm thankful for every one of you who've been uh, watching me this postseason and last postseason. And even some of that minority of you who followed me the first year I followed the Sharks uh, on video. And I've been making videos for these guys for three seasons now. So thank you again, guys, for uh, watching for this past uh, years, past couple seasons. And good luck to Vancouver in the finals. We'll see you all later. And as always, go Sharks. It'll be an interesting offseason, and we'll find out what Doug Wilson does. See you guys later. <clears throat>